Inside the factories of human repair, mistakes do happen. Even doctors armed with MRIs and experience are confronted by problems they've never seen. Every surgery, just a bit different. But what if you knew exactly what you were looking for? So if you can see the patient before you see the patient, if you can do the operation before you do the operation, you have the opportunity to tailor your approach, to tailor your team to the specifics of that particular environment and that event. Um, and, and just think about that opportunity. Think about bringing your Dr. Child. Peter Weinstock runs the simulation program at Boston Children's Hospital, a world-leading surgical training and teaching facility. If you look at airline industry, if you look at um, nuclear power, you look at any sports team worth its uh, weight and salt, you know, every one of them is practicing before the game. So we looked at that and thought, um, why is it that healthcare is not doing that? It started a few years ago when the hospital created Surgical Sam, the world's first operable infant mannequin, which, believe it or not, has a beating heart and other lifelike organs. But that was just the beginning. And so we had Surgical Sam in place and we were doing operations in the simulator and, and then we started to push ourselves and we said, how can we make this even more relevant? And so that's where we brought the first three-dimensional printer. To be specific, a $400,000 3D printer, creating precise molds of body parts, helping surgeons prepare for the most complex operations. Sure, 3D printers have been used to make guns, toys, even cars. But for medicine, the technology is a complete game changer. And this is perhaps the most ambitious medical modeling program and team in the world. It involves uh, industrial engineers, mechanical engineers, simulation specialists, education specialists, special effects folks. We have a puppeteer on staff. It's really creature creation in some ways, but we're really applied on a, on a patient-specific level. Adam Stedman knows all about it. Just a year ago, he got struck by a series of bad seizures. The day of my first seizure, I was sitting in the recliner on my laptop just watching videos. It was a nice day. Next thing I know, I wake up, there's paramedics over me. So when we were in the office and got hit with the diagnosis that our son had something in his brain, that was making him have the seizures and that he would have to have it out because it was detrimental. You could, he could have had a stroke, he could have had you know, a hemorrhage, and he could have, I can't say it. Adam was born with arteriovenous malformation, or AVM, a tangled mess of arteries and veins in the brain. The Stedmans turned to Boston Children's Hospital, where neurosurgeon Edward Smith has performed hundreds of AVM operations, each unique. But this time, he had an advantage. Models of Adam's brain printed in just a few hours. The MRIs turned into something real, something Dr. Smith could practice on. This is a view from the back of his head, sort of in this orientation right here. And what I can do is actually put this on a light box in the operating room, and I can actually see the blood vessel malformation right through the brain, like I have x-ray vision. They also printed out the, the blood vessels themselves, which are seated inside of the brain, just like this. So I can rotate this model around. I can see where the important pipes are coming in and draining out. A good thing, because Adam's AVM was buried deep in his brain underneath the occipital lobe, or visual processing center. There was a chance Adam could go blind or worse. With blood vessel malformations, you can't remove them piecemeal. Because they have a high flow of blood going through them, they can bleed very vigorously and can sometimes even be fatal if they're not treated appropriately. With practice and a plan, Adam's surgery time was cut by two-thirds with hardly any complications. Oh my gosh! <laughs> he smiled. He told me he loved me. Um, and of course, I think I broke down and absolutely cried. Even more challenging, the surgery for Violet Petrock. 
She was born with a rare facial cleft, requiring a complex surgery that would break bone, realign her eyes and nose. Delicate and dangerous work, even for Dr. John Mira, one of the world's leading reconstructive surgeons. In fact, the case was so rare, the hospital took measures to document it, giving us this inside look at Dr. Mira's groundbreaking use of 3D models in surgery. We were actually able to do the procedure before going into the operating room. So we actually made the cuts in the model, made the bony movements that we would be making in Violet's case, and we actually identified some issues that we modified prior to going into the operating room, which saves time and means that you're not making some of these critical decisions in the operating room. You're making them before you actually get there. It's quite a big movement if you look. Look at, the, look at the side here. During the actual surgery, Dr. Mira had the 3D model of Violet's skull close by. What is holding us? Um, serving as a blueprint for his every move. The operation went exactly to plan. Okay, let's do the other medial orbit. Violet's future is very bright. I, I think cognitively she's doing extremely well. She has a wonderful personality. <laughs> she's back home now. She just celebrated her second birthday. <laughs> the printer that had a huge effect on Violet's outcome continues to run 24-7, turning out more than 200 models in just over a year. Already other hospitals, including sick kids in Toronto, are coming on board, buying 3D printers of their own, giving a whole new meaning to personalized medicine. David Common, CBC News, Boston.